It's one of those days that I, you know, we've been on the air eight seasons. It's one of those days where I go, God, I'm really glad I have a show. Uh, our next guest is an actor comedian. I love this dude so much. He's appeared in dozens of shows and movies and is a frequent caller on the Howard Stern show. And he's in town. Oh, I want to make fun of Gary so bad. He's in town performing at the House of Comedy audience. Show some love for the one and only Michael Rappaport, everybody. <laughs> Make fun of Gary. I know. Feel free to make fun of him. Dude, you're going to love this, and the audience knows it. So Howard called me. Oh. And Beth had watched our show on vacation, and Gary sent me a DM and said, you'll know this story in just a second. And Gary called, uh, Gary DM'd me, and he goes, Howard wants to call you. He wants to compliment you or talk about the show because I had done a monologue complimenting. It was after the New York Times profile came out. Okay. And I talked about what an icon of interviewing. Yes, Howard. yes, yes. So Baba Booey DMs me and I'm like, it's this isn't Baba. Uh, ba Boofy? Boofy. <laughs> he emails me. And I'm like, Gary, this ain't you. Wait, and you mean Gorilla Tooth Gary called you? <laughs> <me? laughs> so I said, so I text him back and go, that's not you. He goes, Jason, it's me. Give me your number. Howard's going to call you. So he called me and we had a great, like, four, four minute that's conversation. Cool. So then we did another monologue, and he tried to call me, and I rolled him into voicemail. That's oh, that's. And terrible. then my voicemail was full, yes. and he couldn't leave a message. So he and Robin rightfully ripped me for like. He's like, clear out your voicemail, like that's you know. Funny. Anyway, anyway, that's funny. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm glad to be back Thank here in Minnesota. How <laughs> you shot? Because you uh, you've been here before. Yes. What, you know, other, every part of the com uh, country has a different yeah. audience for stand-up. How would you characterize our audiences here? Um, I, the audiences are very respectful, very fair. Um, they're very um, involved. I, I, I really, really, really love the people of Minnesota. I've always liked the people of Minnesota when I've uh, come here to work. The last time I did comedy here, um, I like the eclecticness of, of the city. I like the diversity of the city. Yeah. I like the diversity of thought of the city. And the audiences are very present. And I love performing at the House of Comedy. I, love I, that I, I must say that walking around the Mall of America, every time I go in there, it's like, I feel like I have to brace myself. <laughs> and and I, what I'm bracing myself for, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. But, but getting lost, possibly eating something I should never eat yeah. ever again. Ever. Um, just, going just, on a ride that the, you don't the, want to go on? I, I'm 52. I'm here alone. Why am I on the Dora Explorer ride? <laughs> like, how did I... I wanted, a, I wanted a cup of coffee, and now I'm on the Dora Explorer. Explorer. How did I get on the Dora Explorer? Why am I in Nickelodeon Universe right. at 52? And if I'm going to be on a ride, reluctantly, I want to be on the Shrek ride. Like, what yeah. happened to me in the Mall of America? Yeah. But I just... I, I, I've always had a fondness for, for, for Minnesota. It's a dope, dope place. Yeah. It's a cool place. Uh, yeah, I always yeah. like it. We do. I mean, yeah. it's a... We're a theater town. Yep. I mean, you know, I, I don't It's decide. artsy, the music, yep. obviously, the uh, prints. I mean, you know, uh, I, I love the city. Okay. We got to talk housewives. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. What do you, let's go. Okay. Because I know we're going to run out of time. So I know we're, no, no. But if you're going to I wrapped early. I wrapped. We okay. wrapped the segment before early. Okay, go. Because I go. said, Rappaport's here. I don't want no three minute no, TV segment. No, let's go. We need let's to go. go. Okay. <laughs> Renna. Let me tell you something. That last episode, the finale of, of, of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Lisa Rinna and Erica Jane, I mean, they were like, uh, uh, like, like, uh, like the bomb squad. I mean, but Lisa, Lisa Rinna was so, I don't know. I, there's walls behind walls, behind denial. Uh, uh, there's thicks, there's, there's, there's levels here that we're not seeing. And something happened with Kathy Hilton that she's able to hold it over her. I don't know what she said. I don't know what, because otherwise Kathy Hilton would be like, what are, what are you talking about? Yeah. But she's so apologetic. I don't like the fact that Kyle is in the middle of it. I no. think that's mean spirited. For yes. Because I feel like Erica and Lisa are using it against Kathy, but the one who's suffering the most is Kyle. Is Kyle. Because who said it on the show? They said, why are you messing with Kathy? Because there's Rich, and then there's Kathy Hilton Rich. Like, out of all the people you're going to mess with, she's, she's on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I, I, though. Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing about the show is that no one is exempt. Yes. Nobody is exempt from getting 
and that's what Erica was saying. Like, yo, you're on the show, you're here, you did something, it's coming out. Because, and, and, and Erica, listen, lover, hater, uh, uh, Rinna, lover or hater, uh, 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 Erica's been in the hot seat. She deserves she, to be in the yep. hot seat. But, you know, if Kathy's on the show, it's not going to just all be, to quote the great Kathy Hilton, hunky dory. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's just not going to, yeah, it's just not going to be a million of her. You're going to you're you're get, get it. It. Yeah. it happens to everybody. There's no housewife. Uh, that ever hasn't had to walk through that fire. And right now she's in that fire, but Lisa Rinna is in turn putting herself in the fire because people love Kathy Hilton so much. Yeah. So that finale, the, the reunion's gonna be sick. Um, Garcelle, please tell me that you love Garcelle. I love Garcelle, but Garcelle has done a great job of avoiding the she fire. She is Heisman. She is the Heisman <laughs> Trophy. She, she is like. She's done it well. And I'm gay, I'm not even supposed to know what a Heisman <laughs> Trophy is. <laughs> I just made a, this is how much I love you. I just made a sports reference. I just made a sports reference. I love but she them is. All. She, she I, drops a oh, line yeah, and then she, she's like, I'm back. Yeah, she's like this. She's like, you know, she's yeah. like Barry Sanders. Or, you know, she's like uh, Adrian Peterson. I know, thank you. I'm playing to my audience. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing to my yeah. audience. Uh, yeah, she's like Dalvin Cook, all right? Come there on. we go, there we go. Did you they he was great. On. He was great, Adrian Peterson, when he was here. He was they went from I Garcelle know, to Lisa Renna in like I know two what seconds. happened. I'm making. I was trying to play, uh, pay homage here. Uh, listen, I'm not going to lie to you guys and make a Kirk Cousins reference. That ain't happening. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Oh, God, I love you. Oh, this is. I'll make. A, I'll switch it again. I'll make a Fran Tarkington reference. There we okay. go. Okay. There we go. Okay. 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 Um, can we talk now? Let's move to New York. I really, I want your take. My take is this insane idea of doing an, uh, a reboot and then the stupid OG crap. They should scrap the reboot and just bring the OGs back, your take. We, we don't need a reboot. No, we do not need when, a reboot. When, 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 when you have Sonia Morgan, when you have the Countess Luanne de la Saps, who I say her name wrong, <laughs> uh, uh, when, you have, when you have Ramona Singer, you, when you have Leah McSweeney, those four last year made something out of nothing. You nothing. Know, you know who's responsible, and we're not going to deep dive on this. Okay. But you know who's responsible for blowing up New York? Ebony. Ebony is responsible for doing it. No one's going to say it, but I am Michael Rapport. Which camera? Right here, Michael Seven. I'm Michael Rapport. Ebony, Ebony, you single-handedly ruined one of the great franchises in Bravo history. Sorry. And this whole idea of rebooting it, you, 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 like, you know how hard it is at this I, point? To reboot that? And, 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 you know, I have so much to say about it, but the, the, those women right there, you talk about the big three, and, you know, they talk about big threes in basketball, big threes in sports. Ramona, uh, uh, the Countess. And, and Sonia. That's the real big three of New yeah. York City. If we can't have Bethany, we, I mean, because that's... Bethany's gone. She's gone. We got it. We got him. We, we got us. We she's need, never coming back. She's never coming back. No. She's never coming back. Uh, and it's disappointing. The real question I have for you, Jason. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 is when are we going to have the Real Housewives of Minnesota St. Paul? Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Uh, well. I know there's some kooky women out here. <laughs> some, and when I say kooky, when I say I say it with, with all, I'm kooky. With admiration. We're kooky. Yeah. Well, I'm kooky. You're kooky. Everybody's kooky. We'll find out when the Real Housewives of Coon Rapids will happen. Let's when we go. come back. Back in a moment. More money. Michael Rappaport. Oh my God. They tried. Welcome back. Okay. Michael Rappaport's here. My, uh, my, uh, my love for, for Michael came in 96 with a movie that I still watch every single winner and I've done mm. every season I remind you to go watch it and I'm talking about beautiful girls mm. and here yeah and here here's one of my favorite scenes of Michael take a look the supermodels and beautiful girls will a beautiful girl can make you dizzy like you've been drinking Jack and Coke all morning she can make you feel high full of single greatest commodity known to man promise the promise of a better day the promise of a greater hope promise of a new tomorrow this particular ore can be found in the gate of a beautiful girl, in her smile and in her soul, in the way she makes every rotten little thing about life seem like it's gonna be okay. So good. You should, 
I have, I, like you said, deep dive. I could do an hour special with you on Beautiful Girls. You shot part of that here, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, honestly, watching that, it, it just, I, I mean, I had so much fun shooting it here and, and the, the, the director, the late, great Ted Demi. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was, such, and I was so, you know, young and all of us, and I was, it was just a great time, you know, when you're that age to have that opportunity to work with. Was that Ted's first movie? Ted, no, Ted had done. Jonathan Demi's son, everybody. Silence of the Lambs, Jonathan. Ted was the son. Yeah. And, and, and he did, he did um, the, it, Swimming with Fishes. And then he went on to do that film with Johnny Depp um, about the drug dealer. It just popped in and out of my mind. What was it? Blow, yeah, Blow. and and it did that just, thought, but it was just a, such a fun time, and you know, working with people that I had admired so much, uh, growing up, Matt Dillon, uh, and Uma Thurman was just coming off of Pulp Fiction, so I was like, yo, this is crazy, uh, so it was it was a fun time being here. That cast, and correct me, Jeff and I were talking. We heard, were you guys, did you guys hang out for like three weeks before to kind of bond? We hung out with, you know, before, we hung out during. I mean, we, everybody hung, we hung. And also it was winter, so like, you'd be like, let's go to this one's room and let's go to this one's room. And it was, we, everybody got along, it was fun. It, uh, they, I, I remember they were filming the movie Fargo here at the same time. Really? And, and they were chasing snow and they wound up having to go, I can't remember <laughs> where, but they needed snow like really bad as you could remember yeah. in the film. But Steve Buscemi and the Coen brothers, they were at the same hotel. Uh, so it was, it, was a fun, like, it was a fun time and it was before cell phones and you know, the memories of you know, running into Buscemi in the, in the, in the hotel. You, you know, did? Oh yeah, man, but it wasn't like selfie time. Like you just have the memory in your head. Yeah. So it was, it was a dope time. Because if, you if you all don't remember this cast, and again, Natalie Portman, yep. Timothy Hutton. Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell, who did that monologue in the drugstore. Yep. Yep. That was one, go watch, that was yep. one continuous monologue yep. take. Yep. You. Natalie Mar Portman, Nat is, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it Martha was, Plimpton. Martha Plimpton. It who was, was with you. Yep. It's a brown diamond. Yep. I'm sorry, it's, I can right. go, yeah. <laughs> Right. I'm so, not going to say the full quote. Yes. But so, yeah. Yes. But it was it was a fun time. And, uh, you know, like I said, that was sort of my introduction to Minnesota. And, uh, you know, now I'm here back playing at the House of Comedy. Again. I can't. I, I, you got to go see it. We have uh, we have one minute and I know you're all going to go see Michael this weekend. Uh, we got to talk atypical real quick. Director Leo would turn the show off if I didn't. It's so damn good. That's such a good show, Michael. Thank That's you. Such a, I, Thank I, you. I hope. You should be so proud. Very it's, proud it's, of it. The quality, yep. I think it actually went up season to I agree. season, which doesn't I agree. always happen. I agree. It was a great show, fun show, important, important. show. Important. Yeah, and a lot of people got to see it, and it was, uh, you know, to, to, to do four seasons on a little show uh, about this dysfunctional family trying to figure out how to deal uh, with each other and, and the son with autism, it was a great time, and, and uh, I'm very proud of it. I, I'm going to, I want to end. Jimbo. Jimbo Kimball was on Stern and talked about being grateful. Something's happened to him lately and that he feels a, a gratitude to guests that come to play on a show. And I, to quote Jimbo Kimball, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, I just want to say thanks, man. I really this I mean, to awesome, have you man. on a show like ours means a lot to our entire crew. Everybody, so thank you. everybody that comes from Minnesota should, should be on thank your show. You, this buddy. is a dope show. And you're great. You. And the well, audience is great. I know. There's some housewives in that audience. Good. You exactly. know. Thank you, guys. Catch Michael this weekend at the House of Comedy. For tickets, go to moa.houseofcomedy.net and find him on social. Just search Michael Rappaport and then listen for him on Stern. We'll be right back, everybody. Back in a moment. Thank you, man, so much. Can I get a picture? Do you mind?